Okay, so now uh, in the last video we worked with just pure imaginary numbers. Now we have an example that says write each of the following in standard form. So we're going to write these, this as a complex number. Okay, looking at part A here, we have 2 minus the square root of negative 25. This is the problem that we need to simplify before we can do anything else. So looking at this number, when, since I have a negative underneath a square root, I know that's going to create an i. So let's just focus on the 25. The square root of 25 would be 5, and then that negative is going to create the i. So whenever I rewrite this, we need to rewrite it as 2 minus 5i. That is a much better way of writing it. We don't leave things, we don't leave a negative underneath the square root if we can simplify it at all. All right, now here we have this next one that says 3 plus the square root of negative 50. Well, again, I'm just going to focus on cleaning up this radical first. And we know that because there is a negative here, we're going to have to tack an i on at the end. So let's just focus on the square root of 50. The square root of 50, we would need to, because 50 is not a perfect square, so we would need to rewrite it as, um, like in this case, 25 times 2. 25 being a perfect square. So that would simplify. The square root of 25 is 5. And then we would have the square root of 2 with our i tacked on at the end. And then we don't forget we have our 3 and our plus here. This is the real part. This is a much better way to write that. And then finally, here we have one that's even a little bit more complicated looking. But again, um, you know, be careful about what you're doing. You cannot just start canceling 2 goes into 4 2 times. That's not possible. This is a term. So if you can't um, cancel it out of the entire thing, you can't cancel it out of one term. Let's go ahead and clean up this radical first. We know because of the square root that we're going to have an i tacked on to the end. So let's just focus in on the number. Simplifying the square root of 12, we would have to break that up into 4 times 3, and then we could take the square root of each one. So as I'm rewriting this, this would be 4 minus, the square root of 4 would be 2, square root of 3 we can't do anything with, and don't forget we're tacking on that i at the end because of the square root of the negative. And then we have all over 2. Okay, now we still, we can't just start canceling willy-nilly. Here in the numerator, we actually have a 2 in common, so we need to factor that out. So that would be 2 times um, 2 minus square root of 3, i, all over 2. Now we can cancel that common factor of 2, and our answer would be 2 minus the square root of 3, i. Now another way, I'm going to show you another way we could have looked at this also. So starting back here at the 4 minus 2 square roots of 3i over 2. Another way to look at this would have been to separate out your terms over your denominator. We could have said 4 over 2 minus 2 square roots of 3 over 2i just using each one of those terms, and since this is just a number, I would just put that in front of the i. Now we can simplify each one. So we could say a 2 goes into 4 2 times, so that would be a 2, minus 2 will go into 2 evenly, and leave us with the square root of 3 and an i at the end. We would still get the exact same answer.